Greetings fellow rangers, Blaze Ranger here, and welcome back to the next episode in Conquering Villages in our Conquering Minecraft series. Um, I've been spending, it's been a while since my last episode, and today I want to go through some of the mechanics of breeding, and the breeding the villagers, and in order to do that, we need to do a little work on the village. I've done a little bit of work, and I'm not going to show you just yet. Because today we're going to go on a bit of an adventure. Um, as you can see, I'm on my trusty steed, ready to head out. And I need to go get one of the taiga trees. I believe taiga, taisa, taisa. I forget what it's called now, how to pronounce it. But in the last episode, have a look at my armor. Well, it's not my armor, that's the horse's armor. Anyways, you'll notice I'm wearing an iron chest plate. In the last episode, um, well, actually, it wasn't even an episode. As I was getting prepared, I wanted to get one of those trees, and they only grow in savannas. And so I went, I headed east about a thousand blocks, which is the direction behind me. And I didn't find any, but I did find a couple villages. And one night while I was spending some time in the village, I actually... Um, had a little bit of a run-in with a few creepers. Not by choice. There was a, uh, well, it was nighttime and the creepers were coming around. There was actually a zombie after one of the villagers, so I went to save him. And when I turned the corner of one of the houses, there happened to be a creeper there and he blew up right in front of me. Oh, this is going to be laggy. I'm not going to record this whole trip. But what I'll tell you is, um, the creeper blew up, and I survived, but it did a lot of damage to my armor. And then, as I'm looking at the hole where the creeper blew up, another one came around the corner and blew up beside me again. So he actually blew my chest plate right off, and it was a diamond one. Enchanted diamond, no less. But So I had to quickly make an iron one, and because we don't have anything to enchant it here, it's not enchanted. So I came back empty-handed, but it occurred to me that a savanna is usually close to a desert, which I happen to be beside because this is where we did the episode on the desert temples. So we're... Uh, where am I going? I want to go straight west, or at least in a westerly direction. But what happened... Ooh, there's a hole there. But... Uh, what happened? It blew up. I came back, but it occurred to me to look around the edges of this biome. Like, there's our new city over here. But I was watching one of the earlier episodes, the episode right after the de uh, jungle temple. And just as we were coming into this desert, we walked right through a savanna. So that's where I'm heading to. Here, have a look at this. Oh, finally. Wasn't sure if I'd ever get out of there. So it doesn't seem to be moving much. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it is. So that's west. So this is east. Let's see. Savannah. Oh, might run into a village. And that was the savannah that I'm going to head to right now. So rather than all this lagginess, I'm just going to zip there and zip back. And then we'll begin the episode. So hang on to your spurs, cowboys. Away we go. And there's the savannah bio. So, it's almost night time too. I don't have a lead, but hopefully the horse won't go anywhere. So I'm just going to chop down some of these trees and we'll wait.
going to grab a couple of the seven. I'd like to get about a dozen. actually got a lot more than I need. I only need, well, just one or two. But let's go home and start the episode. I'll meet you back at the at the house. Boy, I'll tell you, it's really hard to ride when the, gr when the terrain's not generating fast enough. Man, you have no idea what direction you're going. I was lucky I found my way back. But I did, and we're here, and just give me a few minutes to prepare. And then we'll start the episode. Okay, I think we're about ready to start this episode. We're going to talk specifically about breeding villagers and what you need to do to breed villagers. So breeding villagers is not something we actually do. It's something the villagers do themselves. And it's all based on the village itself. So villagers breed according to how many houses are in a village. So what we need to talk about is what actually constitute as a house. And it's all based on the number of doors. I know this is all going to get a little confusing, but it does make sense in a, some obscure sort of mineshaft way. Mineshaft. Minecraft way. So the day's just starting. Let's see if we can finish this in one episode. I tend to get kind of long-winded at things, but your best source is going to be the wiki. There's a pr beautiful video within it, and I will put a link to it below. But it's like I say, it's all based on what constitutes a house inside the, the village. Now, villagers will breed at a rate of... Um, Let's see, how do I put this? There will be a villager for 30, 35% of the number of doors. So if you've got 10 doors in your, or sorry, 10 houses in your village, you would be allowed to have three villagers. If you've got 100 houses, you'd be allowed to have 35. So it's, like I say, it's based on 35% of the number of houses. And what constitutes a house is doors. So there's a door, but that's not really a house. So what you have to do is go on five sides. The computer is going to look five sides to the front and the back of the door. That's the door open, so it doesn't go this way. It, it counts them as they're closed. So what it does is it counts five blocks out in each direction, and it has a look, and it sees if any of these five blocks are blocked from the sun. So if I put a block there, this side is now a door or is now a house because it's it's basically looking for ro a roof to put it in some obscure way. I'm going to really mess this up explaining it and that's why I say go to the wiki, but I'll do just kind of a quick overview. So what it does is it looks and it says, "Oh, there's a block blocking, there's a block hiding the sun from this side, so it must be a roof block." And so this this side is a house. But if I put a block here, now it's going to say, oh, well, both sides are blocking the sun. So this can't be a house because it doesn't know 
sort of which side is the house. If I put another block there, then it doesn't matter how many blocks. Let's just get rid of that one. It's going to say, oh, this one has a more, more blocks that are blocking the sun from hitting this side. So this must be the outside, or sorry, the inside of the house. That's the outside of the house. So it's looking for an odd number of blocks. And it doesn't matter how they're kind of positioned, but it counts this row first. Well, it counts the whole bottom row. And if right now, this is not a house because it's an even number of blocks on both sides. So if I do that, the left side here is now the inside of the house. If I get rid of, what gets rid of? Boy, that's pretty slow. That's oh, even slower. So if I get rid of all of these, this isn't a house. So back, basically we're back to the beginning. So what it's going to do is it's going to look and it's going to count all the houses and all the villagers. Right now I've got nine houses. There's nine buildings with doors that are real buildings. Like if you look at this one, it's got more blocks on the one side than the other. So this is the outside. This is the inside. So what it does is it counts all the doors and I have nine doors so I have nine houses and it looks it says okay 35 percent of nine is three you can have three villagers but I actually have ten villagers in here I didn't breed any of them this what that's what this village actually came with ten villagers nine houses so in order to start making more we have to have more than 30 houses inside this village because then after that it'll start breeding so what I need basically is I need something I like to cheat. You could do this. And then if I just went bing, 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 whoops, hit it, man. Okay, either way, this is now three more houses I've just added. So those three could constitute one extra village, villager, but I need more than the total of 30 doors in this entire ha village before I could, the br villagers will start, will start breeding. So what I've done off camera is I've gone down over here and I've expanded the village a little bit. I did a little bit of row housing and I prettied it up and you know you can't just do it and make it look ugly. I've got beds and chests and no there's nothing in the chests. But I've got a table in each one. Some of them are only two blocks wide. I didn't want to, you know, waste a lot of space. Some of them are three blocks wide. Oops. But, yeah, so they're just houses. They've got a table and, and chairs. So what we have to do now is we have to put doors on all these houses. And this, so, so for each one that I'm adding, I've just, oops, just added four houses, five houses, six whoops don't want to do that would actually work because there's more blocks behind than in front and you can see I've got one two three four so in these four it'll count five it'll count one two three blocks and actually out here it'll go one two three four so there's an more blocks on that side inside than outside so it would count that as a house but Things we're doing it, we're at least going to make it look nice. Boop. Boop. I've used some different woods just to give it a bit of a different look. So yeah, doing doing the house or expanding a village is it's not hard. And oops, that one's on the wrong side. See that one will count that way and that way. So on this side of the house there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks and I count back five. One, two, three, four, five. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That would actually work as a house because it's just this side would be the inside. And I've got lights in all of them as you can see. I don't want any zombies or anything spawning inside them and I've just added one two three four five six seven eight 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 to my 9 is 26. So the villager still won't s start breeding because 26, you take a third of that, the 35%, and a little quick math makes 9 villagers. And we've, like this village can have a maximum of 9 villagers, but we've still got 10. So we have to start adding doors. So what I'm going to do quickly is just tear this apart. And I'm actually going to show you a little trick. It's not mine. I didn't invent it. You'll see it in the video. So if I put a block, well, I can't put a block there because the door's there. Right there, that's actually a house. And the same thing is if I put a door, let's see, a door here here and here. That is actually four houses because on this uh, this door here there's nothing in front of it and one block behind. Same with all four of these doors. It actually looks like a little phone booth or a little outhouse without a roof. I could put a roof on it to make it interesting but but yeah so our 26 we've now got a total of 30 houses in this village. So that a third, a third of 30 is 10. So our, we've got the right amount of houses and the right amount of villagers. So any s houses we start adding will make the villagers start to consider breeding. And I just want to, I'm just going to go around and gather all the villagers into one area so we can keep an eye and just make sure they're breeding properly. But I did want to show you why I wanted to go get that acacia wood that we found just way down there. For no other reason, I wanted to show you just what the different doors are in Minecraft. So going left to right, that's acacia, jungle, dark oak, oak, birch, and spruce. There's how the wood looks after it's been made into planks. There's the raw wood itself. And yes, that one is correct. Jungle wood does go sideways. And this is what the three, uh, six different types of doors look like. Um, so you can pick ever, whichever door you like the most. I like the doors you can see through so that you're not standing here and you go to open it and boom, there's a creeper or a zombie or skeleton right there. So I'm not really, I mean, they look great, but I prefer the doors you can see through. So, like I say, there's the woods. Hey, actually, these would be considered houses because there's a block below or blo a block behind and nothing in front. So that's an extra three houses. The breeder, the villagers theoretically could start breeding. But like I say, let me just get all the villagers together and then we'll start adding a whole bunch of doors and see if we can get them to start breeding. So just hang on for a moment. I'll be right back. So we're just rounding up all the villagers and what I've done is I've gone in and removed all the doors from everywhere except for a few, come on buddy, man, except for a few I've put in just there and given them a little bit of a um, bit of a shelter, what can I say, couldn't just have doors sitting in the middle of nowhere, but yeah, so they're all going to Except for this guy, he's being real stubborn. I've got most of them. I got one stuck in the chicken pen down there. If I could just get this. No, don't go in there. See, he's got nowhere to go because he can't find a door. But there's is that another one? No, it's a cow. But there's a bunch of doors right behind him. I don't know. Maybe there's too many in one area. There he goes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to block him in. Ah, uh, that guy. I can get him too. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll just see we can do that and then we can get rid of this. So that's the nice thing. At night they all want to go inside, so they were all looking for the Good Lord. Wow, see we're speedy. Close enough for the experience, not close enough for the meat. 
Okay, so I think I've got them all except him, and I am not opening a door to let him out. He won't breed by himself anyway, so let's just change it to daytime. We'll take a head count and see how we're doing. So just a second. Okay, it's early in the morning, or just, yeah, close to morning. Anyways, those guys are far enough. They're not going to bug us. they got a little meeting of their own going on over there. Okay, I've replaced all the doors back in the village. Didn't say I closed them all, just said I replaced them all. I've put these ones back here, so now I think we're sitting at about 29 doors. More than we need, well, not more than we need, but... We're going to make a bunch more houses here. Each one of these blocks, with the exception of that one, will represent four houses. So what we do is we just jump up here. We go one, two, three, four. And because this block is the only one within five of those doors, they will represent four houses. And just because we're going to have more houses than we need doesn't mean the villagers are going to start breeding right away. They may take a little time because there's also a thing in there called willingness. And just because they're, you know, all these door or houses doesn't mean they're going to start breeding right away. But when they do, we will be hopefully here to watch. Well, not what? Hey, what's going on here? Oh, that's neat. I didn't know I could do that. But we'll see some baby villagers. And when they do um, have babies, the profession that they become is not based on... Hey, I ran out of doors. Is not based on the parents. It's just a random thing. Let's grab a few more doors. As you can see, I'm sort of loaded up with a lot of weird stuff. And that stuff is because... You can actually increase the villagers' chances of becoming willing to make baby villagers. You can increase that by basically what they're holding. So, and, well, it's based on two things. It's based on what they're... Oops. Uh, let's see. If they're carrying certain items, like if they're carrying uh, in their inventory, like they have an inventory of their own. And if they have three bread, 12 carrots, or 12 potatoes, and beetroots, but I don't have any beetroots. In all the villages I visited, I wasn't able to find any. But yeah, if they carry those four items, it would also make them a little more willing to, to start breeding. So what we're going to do is... Oh, and the other thing that they would increase their chances of willingness is, well, we can't trade with him, is trading with them. So we've brought a bunch of items that these guys might like. So we're going to do a little bit of trading. Just going to take one from him. Because what it'll do is it'll get them on the road to, uh, you know, becoming more willing. Let's see, it's the guy I just saw. Let's go check, check out this guy over here, see what these guys want. Oh, oh, wow, he's got a better deal. I don't want to trade everything away. I just want to get them kind of going on it. There's a butcher. Let's see. Let's grab a couple emeralds off him. And we've got to keep our... Oh, there's a baby villager right there. See a little cleric guy. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the village. He's a baby villager. We cannot trade with him. But in about 20 minutes, I believe it is, 20 minutes of real time, which is basically a full Minecraft day and night cycle, he will be a full-grown adult. So let's just trade with this guy. Like I say, the more we trade... Well, I don't know if it's the more we... Oh, I didn't bring any wheat. Oh, but I did bring this sort of stuff. But yeah, the more willing they are, and as... Oh, there's another little guy over here. Eh, they all got green eyes. Hmm, must be something in the water. So, we have two new villagers. I think he's a blacksmith. But, 
I have to wait and see. I didn't bring any rotten zombie flesh for the cleric. He's too far away. He's a butcher. I'm not actually looking at what they've got. I just want to trade with them. They're supposed to have particles, but I'm getting a bit of lag for some reason. And if you're wondering where I got all this food from, well, let's just say we don't have as many animals as we used to. We're down to about 10 of each. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, sadly. But now I can't remember who I've tra Well, I guess I can see what sort of trades we're going up to. Ooh, pumpkins. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> so yeah, we're not here to increase our trade. They do. They look like little phone booths. So we got two new villagers. We got that little cleric, and we got that little guy. And hopefully, oh yeah, I was gonna do something. I was gonna throw. They said if you throw, going by the wiki. Where's a farmer? Butcher. Well, let's just start throwing just potatoes and things in there randomly. Whoops. That was interesting. Ooh, what happened there? What's this slot over here? I don't remember seeing that before. That's sort of what's in that hand, but how do I get to it? Oh, that's interesting. Let's try this. Hmm. I got carrots in both hands. I wanted to throw some stuff in there. Well, uh, maybe if we just throw it in there. They take bread, potatoes, and... Is it coming right back to me? And carrots. Hey, it is. I think I need to stand up higher or something. Where's it going? Hey, you guys want some food? Looks like he's having a good old heart-to-heart -heart with that guy. They even going over the... They're not even going over the fence, man. I don't have anything to stand on. I thought I had more wool. Anyways, we got two little guys there. And what I might do is put up a whole bunch more, you know, just go make a whole bunch more. While these guys are all in here, Usually they have hearts above their heads, but I'm not getting the particle effect for some reason. I think you're just getting a little bit of lag. But yeah, what I'm going to do... Oh! Wow! <gasps> I wasn't even going to touch on this. That is an iron golem. That is made when you have more than 10 villagers in a village. And that's based on doors and villagers. And he will spawn naturally one iron golem for every 10 villagers. So from 1 to 9, I believe you get 0 iron golems. But from 10 to 19, you'll get 1. From 20 to 29, you'll have 2. So uh, he's here to protect all these guys. So what we want to make sure we don't do is hit one of these guys. Because he will become very mad and he will chase us down. He will also go after any zombies that make it inside the village. I'm sure there's a radius of how far he will go. Like if there's one way over there, he won't go after him. But uh, wow, I, I, did <laughs> I guess I should have expected him, because now we have 12 villagers. But uh, well, welcome aboard, buddy. Glad to have you on. So yeah, he's here to protect these guys. So let me just. Make a whole bunch more doors and see where we end up. I'll be right back. Okay, we've just added 28 more doors over there. There's a bunch going one way and a bunch going another. So we'll just... Oh, there's another little guy right there. That one's a librarian. I, I'm sure he wasn't there when I turned away just a second ago. So yeah, so now we got three little guys, and when they grow up, we can do all sorts of trading with them. And yeah, we haven't traded with this guy yet, so let's do a trade. 
else does he want? Pork chops. I think we can. Take cooked? Raw. Yeah, we'll just. Hey, we got the right thing. Oh, that's beef. Uh, put your nose is meat. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little more trading. And hopefully these guys will do a little more breeding. Yeah, sorry to bug you. Don't mean to interrupt. But... Yeah, so I'll let you know how it turns out. What do you got? Oh, you got pork chops too, eh? Well, it looks like I've placed every door that I had, which is quite a lot. I've even lost count. But we now have four little vi villager babies. We've got these two, um, two librarians. This little guy, I'm, I think he's a butcher, blacksmith, farmer, and there's a little cleric -y guy over here too. So, in a nutshell, I would suggest you check the the wiki. Uh, like I say, I've got the link below. It'll tell you everything about how to make houses and all about villager breeding. I'll put both those links. It'll even tell you, I'll even put a link to this guy here, the Iron Golem, and you can read up a little bit on him. But with these four little guys, I think that's going to be our episode today. So with my pal here, thanks for tagging along. Oh, here's something you want to see. Yep, the Iron Golem. I don't know where that guy came from, but the Iron Golem, as long as he can get to him, makes sure work of zombies.